Imagine that you have started a business and maintaining your sales data into Excel sheets. Five years down the line, you decide to move on Oracle database. Once you migrate, you would definitely need old Excel data into the database, right? Think about it. How difficult it would be to manually input five years of data into Oracle database. There has to be a solution. The solution is SQL Star Loader. It is an Oracle utility which will help you to upload data into Oracle database. You can easily upload CSV files or your text files into the Oracle database. Let us first learn more about SQL Loader utility and later we will look at the lab activity as to how to perform data load inside Oracle. The utility is used to load data from a text file to Oracle database table. The text files are known as flat files and it can be in the .txt or .csv format. Further, SQL Loader utility has different types of files. First, we have a control file. Please note that this control file is different from the database control file. This control file actually defines the parameters which tells how to load data into the table. You actually specify what is the input file, what is the format of input data, in which database table are you going to import the data and other things. Next we have the input file. In simple, this is the file which contains data that will be loaded into the database table. This in file is nothing but the .txt or .csv file that you are going to import. Then we have the log file. Log file is to record actions of SQL loader so that you can use this file for reference. Then we have bad file. Sometimes not all the records are imported into the database. There might be some issue with the records. The records which fail to load inside the database because of some reason or the other will be stored in this bad file. And finally we have the discard file. But before understanding about discard file, let me tell you one feature of SQL Loader. Let us assume you want to import sales transactions only for the month of Jan 2016. But your input file contains transactions of the entire 2016 year. You can even define a WHERE clause while importing the data so that out of the entire 2016 sales, only January transactions are imported. The rest of the records which do not meet the import condition will be kept in the discard file. All the records which do not satisfy any import condition and do not get imported to table are kept in the discard file. In our lab activity, we will be creating a dummy CSV file and will import it inside the database table. Okay guys, now we have the lab activity where we are going to perform an import from a CSV file to a database table. Before even proceeding with the activity, let us create a dummy table inside the database where we will be importing the CSV data. What we are doing is we are creating a very simple test table. We are creating a student table with two columns. First one is roll number and second one is name. We will create a table inside database which will be used for rows import from the CSV file. Let us create this table in our production server. Let us connect to the database. Now create table student, roll number and name. We are just having two columns. You can even describe the student table. Table is created. Next. We will create a sample CSV file at OS level on our database server. First of all, before even creating the CSV file, let us create a location where we will be keeping all our SQL loader files. Under U02, let us create SQL underscore loader folder where we will be keeping all the files related to SQL loader. 
will exit from the database and create this location. Now we'll get inside this location. Okay. Next, we have to create a CSV file. What we are doing is we are creating a dummy CSV file which will contain the data in the same format as the table. Make sure whenever you are performing an import, you need to create the table as per the data that you have. In our case, CSV file means comma separated values. The CSV stands for comma separated values. In our file, all the values are comma separated. We can simply see that. The first character is nothing but the roll number and after the comma we have the name of the student. The same way if you are performing an import of a sales table, first of all you need to gather the structure of your CSV file data, create a table with the required columns of your CSV file and then actually proceed for the import. In our case we have a student table with only roll number and name columns. So we are creating a dummy file with only roll number and name separated with commas because we are importing through a CSV file, nothing but comma separated values. We will create this file at OS level and let us start inserting the data. First student will have Mukesh, the second student Suresh, the third student Ramesh, fourth student ABC, fifth student XYZ and we'll save this file. Now we are under the SQL loader location where currently we only have the input file that is the CSV file. Let us check the contents of the CSV file. We have five students which are ready to be imported into our Oracle database table. That is nothing but students table. Now we are done with putting the dummy data into the CSV file. We have saved the CSV file. Now what we need to do is we need to create the SQL loader control file. Remember as I said earlier, this control file is different than the database control file. This control file actually controls the loading of data from a text file to the Oracle database. Make sure the extension should be .ctl. In the same location we'll create a file like control.ctl and in this file we need to put the below data. Let us look at what data are we putting in this file. First of all we are telling that load the data because we want to load the data from the CSV file to our database table. Next is we have to give the in file location, nothing but the name of the file. Because we are in the same location, we can just give the file name. Next we are defining simple insert command, how we define inside the database. Because with the SQL loader utility, we'll be reading through the file and performing the insert into the database table. Now insert into table, we have to give the table name where we want to perform the insert. Fields terminated by comma because it's a CSV file so the fields will be terminated by comma. Optionally enclosed by double quotes. Remember in a CSV file, let's take from MS Excel if you save the CSV file, your data will be enclosed within the double quotation marks, something like this every data piece will be enclosed into the double quotation marks. In such cases, we are telling our control file that optionally the data might be enclosed in the double quotation marks. Next we have trailing null columns. This option will tell SQL loader that the first part is our roll number, second part is the student name, we don't have a third part, right? SQL loader does not know what to do when it encounters null. Over here after the Mukesh, we have a null value. In such cases, we are telling SQL loader to move on to the second record rather than getting confused at the null values. With trailing null columns, it will actually 
move on to the next record whenever it is encountering a null value at the end of each record. And finally, we define the column names like in which columns what data has to be imported. We want to import roll number and name values. Let us put all this into the control file. We'll insert the data, save the file. Let us cat the control.ctl. Here we have load data in file is nothing but our load file.csv. Let us verify the file name. Yes, the file name is same, load file.csv. Insert into table, we are inserting into the student table. Fields are terminated by comma, optionally enclosed by double quotes. Trailing null columns, nothing but whenever SQL loader is encountering a null value, just move on to the next record. And these are the columns into which we want to import the data. Great, our load file is ready, our control file is ready. We have already created the table inside the database. Next. Now we need to invoke the SQL loader utility at OS level and start the import. How do you invoke the SQL loader utility? You just type SQL LDR. This will start the SQL loader utility. Next, you need to specify the user ID with which you want to perform the loads. Then you specify the control file and at the end you specify the log file name. Log file name you can give any name whatever you want so that entire import activity is dumped into this log file which we can review later to check for our reference. Remember in this SQL loader command we did not specify the in file. Rather we are specifying the control file because the control file internally contains the name of the in file, nothing but our CSV file. So we don't have to worry, SQL loader will read this control file. From the control file it will read the CSV file. Let us go ahead and start the import. SQL LDR. I'm not giving the user ID right now with the SQL loader command. We can give it later also. Next we have the control file control.ctl and then we specify the log. Log is nothing but we can give any name. So we are having track.log. Let us copy and put it over here. If you do not specify the user ID in the SQL loader command and if you hit enter, SQL loader utility will ask you with which user you want to perform the load. We are going to perform the loads with sys user. So I'm giving slash as sys dba. And we can see commit point reached, logical record count 5. If you remember our CSV file had 5 students. Now we need to figure out whether they are loaded inside the database or not. But before even checking the data load inside the database, as we have created a log file, we can see we have this log file. Let us cat this log file and see what is there. Okay, if we start reading through the log file, we can see this is SQL loader generated log file. This is the control file name. This is the data file name. And we also know there are two other types of files. One is bad file and one is discard file. The bad file is very simple. The extension would be nothing but dot bad, bad. We did not specify any discard file, so none specified. Next, the main important area is table student. We can see five rows successfully loaded. And also in case if you are loading huge data, you might see some numbers over here. Zero rows not loaded due to data errors. Rows not loaded because all when clause were failed. Rows not loaded because all fields were null. Same way we have total logical records read, five. There were zero rejected records, zero skipped records and zero discarded records. This means our load was successful. Let us get inside the database and we will select star from student. Perfect. We can see that 
all the records are loaded into the student table. With this way, we have a utility SQL loader which will help you to perform imports from CSV files. You might have a question like, how do I import data from Excel? Simple, when you save the data in Excel, there is an option to save Excel data into CSV format. First, you save the Excel data into CSV format, then use the CSV file with SQL loader utility to import the contents into the Oracle database. 